Hi everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today we once again have the indomitable JJ from ASUS. JJ, thank you again for joining us. Thank you as always for having me. What we are going to talk about is these uh, three motherboards that we have behind us. And uh, these motherboards are all based on the X79 chipset. They are all for the new Intel Sandy Ridge E processors, just like this one, uh, which use the 2011 socket. Uh, now these are what you might call performance boards or mainstream boards. Uh, Asus has a wide variety of motherboards available, but for those of you looking to uh, maybe just get yourself introduced to uh, the 2011 socket and this entire X79 platform, uh, these are a great choice. And we have the, uh, uh, the standard board here, the P9X79. We also have the Pro and the Deluxe versions, which both have uh, some more features. So why don't we start out with uh, the basic board here. Mm -hmm. We'll talk, uh, just do a overview of the boards themselves, and then uh, we'll sort of go up the line and see what you get by going with the higher end boards. Pretty pretty much straightforward here. Here we've got the entry level board into the X79 chipset from ASUS. So this is the P9X79, or sometimes referred to as our standard or basic board. Um, this board's really kind of focused segmentation wise at users that are going to be running one GPU or dual uh, GPU configurations, whether it's Crossfire or SLI. So you do have support for the Crossfire and SLI support. In terms of the rest of the connectivity, pretty feature rich. We have six fully configurable fan headers. We've got um, the- Two there. One here, one down here, one here. Mm -hmm. uh, we then have the standard uh, six SATA uh, ports from the PCH. So we've got the two SATA six uh, gigabit, and then we have the two, uh, excuse me, the four uh, SATA three uh, uh, gigabit uh, connections present here. In terms of the, of course, uh, DIMMs, we can see that we have eight DIMMs here, so we're running probably the most common configuration for this platform, you know, like here, the Corsair Vengeance DDR3 1600 kit, um, enabling us to have 16 gigabytes here, 16 gigabytes here for 32 gigabytes. And that is quad channel memory. So you're gonna to wanna to have four of these DIMM slots populated in order to take advantage of that? That's correct. And you wanna keep out, uh, there will be probably a little bit of a transition time frame that there'll be upcoming XMP 1.3 base modules. Well, a lot of what you'll initially see right now at this time is gonna be XMP 1.2. Um, we are working to ensure the best interoperability and compatibility, but you might need to maybe tweak or tune a couple of settings uh, if you're still running the 1.2 specification memory kits. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and move over to the back I.O. And when we're moving over here to the back I.O., we can see pretty straightforward. We've got uh, the combo USB 2 connector, excuse me, PS2 connector. We've got uh, two USB 3 ports. These are the ones that feature our new USB 3 boost technology. Uh, we've got uh, two more USB 2 ports, 1394 Firewire, and then we have a powered eSATA SATA 6G uh, connection. Uh, we have an optical Toslink out connection. We have our uh, standard eSATA connection. We have the USB BIOS flashback button, which works with our USB BIOS flashback port, uh, which we've mentioned uh, previously in the overview. And then this one is also serves as a standard USB 2 port. Then three more USB 2 ports, two more USB 3 ports. Then we have the Intel Gigabit LAN, and then we have our 7.1 multi-channel audio. Now, new to this chipset and platform, we're also introducing a new Realtek audio package on board with a new DTS suite. This DTS suite is upgraded from the DTS Sensation package that we previously offered to now incorporating DTS Suite Ultra 2 PC. Um, that big old jumble of words essentially means is that we're supporting a number of new algorithms that come into play as well as a new technology called DTS Connect. DTS Connect is an actual full re-encode of a two-channel signal into actually a multi-channel signal that can be output from the actual digital connection or from HDMI connection. So this is great, especially for games which sometimes aren't in multi-audio uh, tracks, where you can re-encode them into a multi-channel output, put them out to receiver, and be good to go in that regard. So that overall gives you your platform connectivity there. And uh, lastly, if we just do a quick recap here on our PCIe slots, you can see we have a physical by 16, physical by one, by one, physical by 16, one legacy PCI slot, and then we have one more physical by 16. Alrighty, and uh, that is a basic overview of the entry-level board. Uh, we also have the Pro right over here, and mm -hmm. uh, just as far as a comparison to the, uh, the basic P9X79, uh, what do you get here jumping up to the Pro version? The Pro really, we actually, we step up quite a bit in pretty much almost every single regard we've upgraded the board. So first and foremost, we can see actually for the VRM section, we've gone to a board that now incorporates a center-based heat pipe design. So we have more heat dissipation ability for the VRM. 
while the overclocking performance on all three of these boards is very strong, uh, the Pro is going to be able to help maintain higher level overclocks due to the more advanced cooling on the VRM design. So the heat pipe here just leads over to another radiator that's right there near the uh, back of your case? That's correct. So if you had like a 120 millimeter fan here, and you had a downward firing fan configuration to help cool the VRM in the back plane, as well as the dims, you then exhaust the air through the back channel. All right. um, we also then, of course, incorporate a heat pipe design running from here across the PCH to go ahead and help extend cooling for the PCH as well. Now, in terms of the actual connectivity, we're still looking at a lot of the same implementations previously. So we still got the six four-pin fan headers that we previously had. So those are all present there. For USB 3 connectivity, we extended a little bit further, and we have a front USB 3 connector outside of the back uh, USB 3 that's present on the board. For the serial ATA, we now step up to eight serial ATA that are right angled, continue our good usability theme. These two ports are special though. This introduces a new technology that we have that's called ASUS SSD caching. Uh, the chipset for X79 does not natively support any type of SSD caching. So at launch, this board will be able to provide to you SSD caching in a seam seamless configuration. Uh, no required access to the UEFI to make an adjustment to RAID. You don't have to make any changes in terms of capacity limitations. So you can go ahead and use a plus 60 gigabyte SSD if you wanted to. Um, we think optimally most users are probably going to go for a high performance SSD maybe like 120 gigabyte here, um, you know, and then probably match up like a combination, something like where you'd go 120 here for your OS, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe you'd go with like a 60 for your uh, SSD caching with like a two terabyte hard drive. So that might be an interesting configuration in terms of being able to use this type of design layout. But of course, you could also still pair up your standard SSD with the mechanical and use that as your primary um, OS uh, controller. So the flexibility is up to you. A lot of flexibility there, especially since you can uh, use the larger capacity SSDs. Correct. And uh, does the, for the SSD caching, will that work with any of these ports? And then the cache drive here, do you need both ports? The SSD today. caching is specific to these two ports here. Okay. Uh, that's the reason why we think that in the configuration, most likely users are going to run primary uh, off of here and then maybe use that as storage. But like I said, vice versa, either which way you can benefit from that implementation. Okay. Um, when we move over on term to the, bo uh, the bottom end of the board here, we step over here to uh, we have the power, we have the reset, and then we have the clear CMOS button. So those are all mounted there. Um, then we also additionally have the debug LED. Now the debug LED extends what we already had previously on the standard board with the QLED lighting mm -hmm. system. So you still have QLED here, but you also have debug. So those two can work in combination, really giving you an extensive level of information for diagnostic troubleshooting. And even relating to troubleshooting, just like on the standard board, we maintain the memo K button. So the memo K button is just a one-click easy option to allow you to troubleshoot potential memory compatibility issues or post issues that are related to memory. Okay. So let's uh, take a look at the backplane for the I.O. here. Backplane for the I.O. here we can see we can step up to quite a bit more USB. So we go to four USB 2 connections and we still maintain of course the USB BIOS flashback connection. Two more USB 3 ports that feature the USB 3 boost technology. We have the Intel Gigabit LAN, the Toslink optical out. We have two powered eSATA ports uh, that are SATA 6G. Two more USB 3 ports two more USB 2 ports, and then we feature our Bluetooth implementation, or BTGO. So that's Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR support plus our software package, which allows you to do things like sync it with a tablet or like a smartphone to be able to turn off and on your PC, stream music, do internet tethering, a whole bunch of nice usable functions. And then we have the 7.1 audio package, which still supports the DTS Connect that we had on the standard board. All right, lots of features there. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, let's move on to the Deluxe the most special of this trio of boards. Yeah, the Deluxe uh, takes it to kind of the furthest level. Uh, once again, on the standard board, we had two-way uh, support. Pro board, we stepped up to three-way SLI. Deluxe, we still maintain three-way SLI support, but we extend uh, the connectivity as well as some of the robust um, cooling options even further. So here we even go to a, a more advanced uh, heat pipe assembly uh, with more actually fins for uh, greater dissipation, so a board even for focus further at overclocking headroom in terms of being able to maintain uh, temperature control for the VRM. We still maintain the six fan headers on the board, the front USB 3. We still have the eight serial ATA ports, including the SSD caching function that we previously mentioned before. We then still have, of course, the power reset, clear CMOS, and the debug LED. In addition, we're keeping the memo K as well as the QLED lighting mechanism. 
Um, in terms of the slot layout, we can see that it's very focused, just like the Pro was, at, at non-legacy connectivity, right? So we've got the physical by 16, by 1, by 16, by 16, by 16, by 1. So optimal, just like all the boards are, dual slot spacing, or a three-way design without any overhang. So great configuration in that regard. Now, if you were to run a two-card SLR Crossfire with this board, would mm -hmm. you actually use these two ports? That would be the ideal configuration because then that way you can maintain great airflow so that you don't have to have uh, any impact of the actual cards uh, being in pro close proximity to each other. But for three-way with three two-slot cards, ideally you wouldn't want any overhang, so you mm -hmm. would go uh, one card, another card, and then another card. Okay. And then for the backplane I.O. is where things get a little bit interesting on this board. So we can see here we've got four USB 2 ports, once again the USB BIOS flashback function. Here we have a specialized module. This is actually a Bluetooth 3.0 module. So this is the newest high-speed protocol transmission for Bluetooth. It's significantly faster than the previous 2.1. Um, so new devices like our uh, uh, eSlate or uh, newer uh, smartphones that are on the market uh, support Bluetooth 3.0, so if you're transferring photographs, uh, maybe video, things along those lines, you have a much faster level of performance at transferring those files back and forth. In addition to that, we have integrated 82.11n, and the unit does also come with an actual magnetic antenna, so this can essentially just click onto the top of your chassis. Uh, you plug this into this little jack right here, and then from there you have flexibility at being able to position the antenna wherever you want. So pretty much we're giving you all the connectivity right out of the box. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Intel Gigabit LAN, but even for the LAN we're extending that to dual Gigabit LAN controllers, one being Realtek and the other one being Intel. For USB 3 we can see that we then have six USB 3 ports here on the back plane, and those are all featuring the USB 3 boost technology that we discussed before. We've got the optical toss link out, we've got dual powered SATA 6G eSATA ports, and then we have the 7.1 audio, which also features the DTS Connect package that we considered before. So overall, you can see that uh, pretty much in every single one of these segments, you get a whole lot of board at whichever one you're looking at. Some very robust features, definitely. Let me just set that down. And uh, I think that is going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, once again, this has been the ASUS line of uh, Performance X79 boards, the P9X79 Standard Pro and Deluxe versions. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. JJ, thank you very much for stopping by and sharing this information with us. Thank you so much. And definitely, uh, if any users are looking for more in-depth guides or feature breakdowns, we'll have those available on our ASUS ROG forums. ASUS ROG forums uh, for more information on these boards. Also, the ASUS ROG YouTube channel if you want to see more of JJ and a lot of the work that they do there. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. Also, please subscribe to our Newegg YouTube channel if you're interested in more tech videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.